and therefore baba says while you see you don't see but don't fascinated by it attracted towards it don't be attached to it so this is one form of attachment the physical attachment the grass body so that we are not under its spell not enchanted by it not slaves to its attractions to the pull of the body then the second is players and passions sensual players when we eat something we relish its taste when we look at something we look at its we enjoy its beauty the outer beauty as i said its features its forms and figure and then we become dependent upon the sensual players our mind is drawn again and again to those things in the gita this is a question put to put by arjuna why is it that our mind is disturbed that we don't have peace of mind what happens to it what is actually the analysis the basic cause the analysis that gives us the basic cause about our sufferings how they develop where from they start what is their origin how they begin and the answer that has been given is that first of all you come in contact with certain things consumer goods certain things you eat certain things you feel their softness or hardness their warmth or their coldness by sense of touch or certain persons with whom you relate so the first thing is contact with the grass persons when you are on this planet earth when you are a living person you have to come in contact with certain things and with certain persons now it is from here that the thing starts what kind of contact it is and what kind of contact you want to maintain the problem starts from there so once you have contact then what happens is from that develops your like and dislike you eat something you like it or you don't like it or you partly like it partly dislike it you like it up to certain extent up to a certain quantity and not more than that but likeness and not liking it this kind of attitude develops it comes at play when you come in contact you meet some persons you say i like this person you eat something you say i like this who made this tell me the recipe i would also like to make it it's very good tasty so liking or disliking is what you develop by coming in touch by coming in contact with objects consumer objects or persons and from that you develop fondness or hatred first of all you like them then you become fond of them oh then you become to begin to love them would you like to have a cup of tea you say yes i would love to have it originally you may not relish tea you say what why why people drink it i don't like tea but once you get this habit you develop the liking and then you become fond of it so that if no one offers you you say you have not offered me even tea i would love to drink a cup of tea because you have now developed the fondness for it so by coming in contact with persons and objects you develop likeness and fondness and then this becomes stronger and stronger you develop some kind of dependence on them now this is the real trouble if you like or dislike up to that level also is a different question but when you become dependent on them you can't be without them you think of them again and again they come to your mind they enter into your mind you want to have them this is what is called ichcha baba has been saying in murli ichcha some kind of a desire this desire also may become stronger day by day it may become young day by day ichcha matram avidya baba has been saying in the murli you must give up these desires 
because then you develop this kind of a desire for them these desires as i said become strong and if those desires are fulfilled don't think that you are satisfied desires are never satisfied that is the very nature of desires one desire feeds the other if your desire is fulfilled it becomes stronger because the desire is getting its food so if you get food you become stronger or you become weak when you get food food is a source of energy to you you become stronger and the food for the desire is the desire itself when you satisfy the desire then that desire becomes stronger like you satisfied your hunger it is not that you have taken your breakfast and now you won't take lunch you would take lunch and after taking lunch you would be ready for the dinner or cup of tea in the afternoon it's not that by satisfying your hunger or your thirst you are satisfied i say you are satisfied you say yes totally satisfied not satisfied forever you have become stronger and now you want to eat again so this is what happens with the desires and then what happens is as i said if you fulfill your desires they become stronger if you don't fulfill your desires you crush them suppress them repress them they come up very much in your dreams then you are a person in turmoil emotionally disturbed that repression is bad for your physical health as well as for your mental health desire is such a thing to fulfill it is also difficult and a problem and to repress it is also a problem unless and until you get rid of it it is going to disturb you even in your sleep it will come in the form of as some people try to interpret one's dreams the psychoanalysts or psychiatrists trying to ask a person what your dreams generally are from that they come to the conclusion that this person has these kind of repressed desires so and then what happens is if certain circumstances or certain persons or obstacles in the fulfillment of your desires you consider them as your enemies your opponents you hate them from here develops hate hatred why you develop hatred because certain objects certain circumstances certain persons they stand in your way of fulfilling your desires and as i said desires are developed from liking disliking fondness loving so on and so forth coming to the stage of dependence so then hatred comes and when hatred has come hatred takes the form of anger anger always has a predecessor in the form of anger always have some kind of hatred preceding it so hatred comes first there cannot be anger without hatred so one step further from hatred you go to anger and anger it destroys our sense of judgment our balances our proportion we have no hold over our mind no control over our emotions we lost our wits our sense we are not our real self then whatever is the beast in us that comes out we become uncivilized person uncultured persons uneducated in the real sense so that is called the vices the five major vices when we are not our own self then we say we are disturbed disturbed means what disturbed means we are not in our original stage your original stage is original stage but when you are not in that it means you are disturbed so anger is something which disturb you but you don't know that it came because of hatred and you don't know that hatred came because of desires unfulfilled and you don't know where from the desires came and how the whole thing started the genesis the story of origin like the genesis of creation how the world was created so how the anger is created where from it comes up if we know this 
then we should know that these passions and these players, it's not that you should not eat food which is properly cooked or which has a proper taste. We have to have that kind of sense that that is called a civilization. We are civilized people and whatever we do, it should be in a perfect order. It should be nicely done, properly done. So do things in a proper way as should be done. But it means that you should not be attracted by the touch, by the taste, by the color, by the outer appearance. You should not develop dependence to the extent of having these desires. Always your mind has open doors and the desire comes as an uninvited guest, always. Or someone making telephone calls to you from a distance, can I speak to you for a moment? And you say yes. Always you pay attention to those desires who just intervene, who trespass into your mind. In the West, we keep so many kinds of security. Our buildings, without caring for the security of our mind, desires, these rapers, these rapists, all things are first of all in the form of desires. Anyone who commits a murder, anyone who rapes, anyone who steals, pilfers, first of all is the desire, the thought. And it is these which take the form of various actions. And these kinds of desires are always, whenever they like, whatever the time, even in our sleep, they enter into our mind. Is this the security system? We are aware of trying to have all other kinds of national defense and communal defense and so on, but not this. So, when we know that this is the nature of players and passions, then we do not want to have attachment to the consumer goods, to the persons and the players and the passions, knowing their transitory nature. And we also know the more we run after them, the more they run before us. We can never catch them, we can only catch their shadows, that's all. And ultimately, there is a kind of an involvement you will find. The more and more you do it, the more and more you are involved, you are entrapped into this. You can't get out. This fondness is entrapping you making you its captives, that you don't realize. So this is another kind of attachment which we have to give up. The third is power. Power. We all do require power. Without power, nothing can be done. Power is an essential element of life. A living person is a powerful person without certain physical powers, mental powers, some kinds of powers, nothing can be done. Energy is required for every action, physical action, chemical action, whatever. Energy is certainly needed. Then also power. But some people wanting political power, economic power, other kinds of power. Now power can be good, the way it is used, if it is properly used in a benign way for the good of others. Then that power can uplift you, can make you an instrument for the service of so many. It can give you a sense of fulfillment and you can feel satisfaction that you have done something worthy in your life. Power is a good thing, no doubt. But the way I am telling about power and about the attachment is, we want power in a different sense. We want some kind of an authoritarian approach that we are something. People should know that we have this power. The motive is different. The motive behind our lust for power, our wish for power, our desire for power is not that we want to do some good. Maybe initially perhaps it is sometimes like this, a good motive. But as they say, power corrupts a man and absolute power corrupts him absolutely. This is what is happening in life. It goes into the head of a person. Are we ready? Have, have we the power to have the power? Any person who does not have the power to have balance in the head, to make use of the power in a good way. First of all, we have to have that kind of power. If without having that kind of a power, we have some kind of a power, then that power corrupts. 
and we should know that if we don't have the motive of doing good to others through the power which we have then what happens is we make people our enemies you see any person in power the more powerful the person the more enemies he has you just have a look at the powerful persons why because there are so many people they are attracted to a powerful person because they think this person can do our work can be a useful being for us everyone has got a vested interest a self selfish motive and they are drawn to where the center of power is and they would approach that person with a demand with some kind of a request now they say there was never born a man who could please the whole world has ever a man been born who could please the whole world not to my knowledge and not i hope to your knowledge no such person so when a powerful person is approached by family members by friends by those who gave him the vote for election those who helped him those who are related to him those who think their demand is valid justified that it is his duty that he should do it to us or those who want some kind of a favor to him from him so all of them encircle him go to him and as i said can't fulfill the desires and demands of everybody and those who get frustrated whose demands are not fulfilled they become his enemies opponents they say oh since the day he got this power he is no longer our friend when the time of election was there his people his agents would approach us to vote for him and now that he is enthroned he is in the seats of power the levers of power are in his hands he no longer even has time for us we sought an appointment for a month and he says he is busy those who are his assistants they always say he has no time no time for us okay when the next election comes we will also say we have no time for you so they become his opponents you know that is what happens so if you are not using power for the benefits of for the well being of others and beware even if we are using it for the well being of others at least people have a satisfaction this person has a limited capacity what can he do he has no time but he is a good man at heart he would certainly like to help us but there is difficulty there must be something why he can't do it so if they realize that this man is really making good use of the power if not then he is inviting problems for himself to have power means to invite troubles to send a cordial invitation to our opponents to our rivals our enemies to to the problems opening doors for them so outwardly this again is maya we are thinking that we are having power not knowing what power actually is actually we are supposed to have that spiritual power which satisfied first of us because when you have power and there is another person you don't want to share powers with him you want to have all power by yourself not to share because if you begin to share then this person may get more credit and people may go to him leaving you so one of the things which a powerful person has about him is that he does not want to share powers and if he wants to share powers if others have a little more power then he is jealous of them then jealousy enters his mind so so many things yet man is very fond of power and position power so therefore having these eight spiritual powers because baba has given us alternative it is our very nature to have power we cannot be without power but baba says why don't you try to become powerful as shri narayan was as lakshmi was who had no opponents no enemies with whom everyone was satisfied why don't you have those eight powers by which you yourself are also satisfied you are not jealous of anyone you are happy to see everyone you must have power i know that by nature every human being would like to have power but what kind of power you should have baba gives us eight powers have these powers and then you will not have attachment with that kind of power 
because some replacement, some alternative, some kind of a strategy is required so that there cannot be perfect vacuum in this world. If something is removed, another thing comes in its place. Things do not remain empty. Someone fills up that space. So, you should not be attached to power, name and fame, as Baba has been saying, by trying to have the name and fame as Sri Narayan has, who are worshipped in the temples for 2500 years. There cannot be better name and fame than they had. They were divine beings. Nobody would speak ill of them. Whereas, many newspapers would criticize a man of political power or a man of monetary or economic power. As someone would praise them, another man would equally criticize them. What kind of power it is? It is a crown of thorns which they wear. Not a crown of gold bedecked with jewels as of Sri Naran and Sri Lakshmi. What kind of power you would like to have? That kind of sovereignty. Therefore, the more you get detached from this kind of power, then you will have that kind of power. If your mind is filled up with attraction towards this kind of power, logic, worldly, political, economic, or the other kind of this Kalyugi world, then you can't have powers of Baba. You can have one thing at a time. In your fist, how many things you can have? Not so many laddus, just one at a time. So, it is for you to decide. And therefore, when we talk of Nashto Moha, it's not only in regard to our physical attachment to the body, but also to power. Then another is position, privileges and perquisites. Position. I have been in this Gyan for so many years, but what is my position? I entered this institution as an ordinary student. And after 20 years, 10 years, 12 years, I am still an ordinary student. What is my position vis-a-vis -vis this person or that person? So, we are trying to have positions. And for that, certain names, certain titles, some kind of honorable honor. Because position means some kind of honor, some kind of title. What is your position in this organization, in this setup? People generally ask, position. So then we become mindful. Of what our position? Yes, it is a valid question. We should have some position. We have been in this institution for so long years and gathering dust, having no position at all. You see, we will pass away like this. As we entered, so will we go away from here. Empty-handed we came and empty-handed we go. Getting nothing, you see. A rolling stone gathers no mass. This is what with us. No. We should have a position. So then we become aware of having a kind of a position. We get fascinated with the idea and we make a demand. Dadiji, we have been in this center for so many years. What is my position? This person is the senior teacher. Once when I came, she was in this center for four years. At that time, she was the senior teacher. And I was just a new entrant. But now 14 years have passed and I am still an assistant. You know. What is my position? Will I throughout my life never become a senior teacher? You see, any, any promotion in my position? So that kind of position, some kind of a new, new kind of demand and some kind of an attachment. And Baba says, when you are in your position, you don't have any opposition, children. You know, remember from Baba's Murlis? Set yourself in your seat, as Dadi Guzar was saying this morning also. What is your position as a child of God? What is your grace? Where in the sky you are? You don't realize your self-respect, who you are? Is that less than anything else? If somebody tells you, you are a senior teacher, is this a bigger position or that you are a child of God, whom God loves, who is in the good books of God, whom God says, meethe, meethe, bache, you see, my sweet children, sweet, sweet children. So instead of feeling attraction towards that, if we feel attraction towards what human beings give us, a transitory, a short-lived kind of position, worldly position, so that we get a higher place, 
a higher rank in the eyes of others if we are mindful of that kind of position then we are losing that kind of position keep it in your mind whatever you want whatever comes in a natural way just for the sake of service is fine but if we are after this if we are hungry for this thirst for this baba says okay children have it if you don't want to have my heritage what i am giving you if you have no value for it this is more valuable for you he fulfills our desires these kinds of desires also i find sooner or later are fulfilled because when a child begins to weep and says i would eat this the doctor says don't eat this but then the loving mother gives little bit all right don't weep but don't eat too much because the doctor says you should not so gives a little bit to taste to satisfy the child because then becomes the question of prestige the child thinks i am weeping and still the mother does not care for me and the mother think that now she he is so obstinate i will have to give without that he won't stop weeping so she gives a little bit okay have little ice cream but your throat is not good and the doctor said don't have ice cream and he says no i will eat ice cream so what should she do she gives a little bit she has to <laughs> there is no other alternative to fulfill that desire so the father has been telling us not these positions children you are at my at the throne of my heart can you see how much i love you do you realize i guarantee you i will take you with me and i will make you the king of kings that kind of position i will give you leave everything to me and do whatever i ask you to do and we say that would be only afterwards first of all give us this position please he says okay but that much would be less because your demand is fulfilled how much he can give you and how little you want from him don't you know from whom you are demanding you see a very small request to a very great person it looks ugly doesn't fit and what is our position if you really ask we are not beggars you see and then we are begging from whom in bhakti marg also we were begging again when we have gyan we also begging from human beings or from representatives of god or from god himself oh my lord almighty my father on high make me a senior teacher you <laughs> see senior than the other person fulfill my this desire please for 14 years you have been i have been in the queue waiting for this you see so this position power privileges because with position comes privileges and perquisites you want so many things now you want to travel by another class your means of transport should be changed because your position is higher your place where you are seated you are the order of seating everything should be changed because your position has changed so if that is not done then what does our position mean these thing also should be changed with your position so all these things and we are never satisfied because then again there are people who are senior to us superior to us elder to us advanced than us and then we want that kind of position and still another position still another position and we die broken hearted persons because we are not satisfied there is nothing in this world which is more valuable more precious than satisfaction if we are not satisfied we are poor really poor we don't have that kind of thing we will always be beggars we were born as beggars and we will die as beggars if we don't have satisfaction and who can satisfy ourselves except ourselves it is we who can satisfy ourselves if you say yes i am satisfied you are satisfied it's not that you can be done any spoon feeding from a cup of satisfaction some spoon can be filled up and put in your mouth down your throat and you say yeah now i am satisfied it's not that kind of alchemy you see it's you who have to feel that kind of satisfaction and satisfaction is the greatest success it is the greatest achievement so if we have attachment to position and to privileges and to perquisites then we can never have satisfaction and then this is the loss because of that attachment so we must give it up then i said persons and personalities 
persons and personalities. Sometimes it may not be because of the outer charms of a person, not because of the beautiful looks of a person, but some qualities in a person. The intellect of a person, the knowledge of a person, or the, the ways and means of a person, some other kinds of things of persons. So we may be attached to them. And Baba says in various forms, you should not be attached even to me. You should love only Shiv Baba. It is he who gives you the heritage. It is he who gives you the inheritance. Children, not me. Why he says like this? So that to anyone who is corporeal in flesh and blood, we should not get attached to that person because the time comes when that person would leave the body. And it is the incorporeal, the supreme, that Jyoti Bindu Shiva, the Lord, the God, the Father, of all the world, of all the souls, who is perfect. Others are number-wise. He alone is the perfect. After the perfection, then the number starts. So it is up to you. If you are attached to someone, then with the good qualities of that person, the bad which this person also has, they will also come to you because you are attached to that person. If therefore you have in mind a perfect one, then you will be marching towards the goal of perfection. That is really the essence, the understanding behind it. And therefore our attraction, our attachment should be only to one. Therefore they say God is one. Otherwise what is the need of saying God is one? That all, are, all these are not manifestations of God. They are all imperfect. They are all in flesh and blood. All their appearances for the time being. Ultimately, death will overtake them. There will be no more. If you depend upon them, then you will suffer emotional turmoil. A time will come. It is therefore that you must be attached to or love only one. God is one. None but one. Then, as I said the other day, the sixth is the places. Attachment to places. Even if a person has a small hut, this is my hut. I live here. I was born here. This is the place where I was born. And here I used to play. That is the place where my mother founded me. So on and so forth. Attachment to places. Having some kind of a fantasy for them. So this again is a kind of attachment which we should give up to places. Therefore, Baba was saying in Murli the other day, always remember that we have now to go back home. We have to go back home. If we have attachment to persons, personalities, places, passions, players, power, and all these things, then we are tied down by all these so many ropes to some kind of pegs. How can we fly? How can we become angels? If we want to become angels, if we want to fly, break all these ropes, break all these chains. Then only you can go back home. So we don't belong to here, we belong to somewhere else from where we came. And for that purpose you must give up attachment to all these places. Then seventh, praises and platitudes. Praises. We get attachment to praises. Someone praises us. Now if someone tells us, you have this quality, that quality, the other quality. Now what happens is, that our attention on our weaknesses is totally missed. We become slack in our efforts. We do not pay attention to the things, our weaknesses, our shortcomings which we should be removing. We become oblivious of it. We become proud of our whatever is good, whatever people praise, neglecting where we should be strong, where need I be strong, where we must make efforts. So that again makes our efforts very slow. And we become depressed the day when no one from morn till night has said a word of cheer, a word of praise to us. Daily we must have 
at least something which serves to us as a tonic. And that tonic now is to us certain words full of praise. Oh, you are so good. This quality, that quality and the other quality. And then we think, yes, I am something. So that means I need be reminded by somebody else what I am. Instead of knowing myself what I am, if someone tells me in high words what I am, then I feel puffed up. So like a balloon into which you breathe out air and it becomes, you know, you can see what it becomes. So that is what happens to us. Baba therefore says, let all praise be to one. This morning also, Baba was saying, if some, someone comes to take knowledge, the teacher is not so able to give that knowledge to that man. Baba says, I help and I convince that person. I serve the person. And this person, this teacher thinks, I did it. Then attachment to our possessions, whatever things we have been given for discharging certain duties, for doing certain acts, if we just develop some kind of attachment for those things, whatever we possess. Possessions and pelf, money. Pelf, money. You can say pounds and pennies. Profiteering. Attachment to money, money, money and money, always. Possession, possession and possession. Actually, we are possessed by the thought of having possession. But we think we possess the things. Without realizing the things are possessing us. So with some people it becomes some kind of an obsession. Not to give up things. Not to share it with others. Not to give it for better use. To be so narrow minded. To clutch to certain objects, certain things, certain persons. As if they are our possessions. It is this which develops into greed. Actually it is a tendency towards possessions. And uh, then it develops into the tendency to have more and more possessions. This is what we call greed, the temptation, the allurement. Because whatever comes to us, we don't want to lose it. Some are even so miserly that they develop the thought of possessing that the thing should be before them. They don't want even to spend, even to use. They become so much fascinated with possessions. So this again is with is some kind of an attachment. Let us use things because they are meant for this purpose. Let us share it with others because others are sharing with us. Without this, this world is not a family. It is not a society. There has to be give and take. There has to be some kind of a relationship which means that we have not to be exclusively using things which are to be used for the well-being of others. Certain facilities, certain objects which are meant for certain causes. Then another is peculiarities. We have each one of us some peculiarity. Each one of us is different from the other. And we are attached to that peculiarity. Someone tells us that this is not a good nature, good habit. I say, but this is my nature. I would like to be doing it. I have always been saying it. Someone says, all right, speak the truth, say whatever you feel, but say it in nice words, say it softly. Don't be harsh. And my peculiarity or my habit is that whatever I say, I say it with a bang and uh, openly, frankly, sometimes roughly. And I, I am proud of it. This is my habit. I am not afraid of anybody. I must tell people in their very face, I am so attached to it that some well-wisher wants that I should give up this bad habit. He is saying that you should tell the truth. I am not saying that you shouldn't tell the truth. But you must tell the truth in a loveful manner, giving respect to others. And uh, in a refined way, in a civilized manner, being nice to others. This is the only thing I am saying. He would say, but I am not afraid of anybody. I have the courage to say what I want to say. Why should I not say? So that we, each one of us has got certain 
things, certain habits, certain peculiarities. Some of them good, but not divinized, not spiritualized. And some of them even not good, which are not even human, which are subhuman, which we must give up. But yet we are proud of them. And we don't want to give them up. We want to stick to them. And we resist. This resistance comes from our attachment to our certain peculiarities. Someone is fond of going to the sea, putting on certain different kind of dress, which in a different culture, in a different society is not considered good. Or now that we have different kinds of responsibilities to keep some kind of a respect, we should not be doing it. Some people say, now you are not a small child, you have grown up, you should not wear this kind of dress. Your position, your place is different. People expect different things from you. There should be some grace in whatever you do. When you were a small baby, you would doing all this. No, no, but I like this. This I can't give up. So I can't give up. And this is what I like. Certain kinds of peculiarities which have become a part of my life, which now I feel attached to them. So that if someone higher than me, advises me in the interest of service, in the interest of my own development, my own progress, to give it up, saying it's not, it was good at a particular point of time, but not now, or for other reasons, then I put up resistance. So, attachment to certain peculiarities. Then certain pastimes. We are attached to certain pastimes. Someone trying to have gossip with others. Oh, what other news, brother? What good news you are going to give me? Now, fond of talking to people, trying to have news to buy away time. Some would like to play cards, someone other kinds of games or something. We have all of us some hobbies and certain kinds of things for passing time, put switching on the TV or other things different with different persons. So certain things may be of use, may be necessary. You have to do them because of certain reasons. Certain things may not be bad. So if you use them, it's not objectionable thing which you are doing. But to be attached to them, so that again and again you just go towards them, your mind thinks of them, you run after them, you become dependent on them, as if you can't give them up, that kind of feeling from in others from your behavior. So, this is another kind of attachment which you would find different people, like somebody playing cards. There is an example in India, an instance is given. Four friends playing cards and uh, the father of one of them died. So, a messenger came to tell him, your father is dead. He said, oh, he is dead. Okay, let me finish the game, you see. Then he was standing, thinking that he would finish it quickly. Now the game was over. He said, why are you hanging here? After all, his dead body will be carried this way. So when the dead body is, the coffin is going this way, I will get up, I will give up cards. So let the dead body, the coffin come and I will get up. So again he began to reshuffle the cards and play another game. So fond of game. He was so detached with his father and so much attached to the cards, to that kind of value of the understanding of what we should be doing actually and just becoming lazy, not pastime because of certain other reasons, but boiling away time, killing away time as they say, as if there is nothing else to be done. So time which is money, time which is energy, time which is important, if we just spend like this and we have attachment without realizing how many things yet remain to be done and they are calling us. So instead of doing those things, we just do this. So this is attachment which enables, which uh, forbids us to leave that up. Then there are certain petty things to which we are attached. Gifts, birthdays. So trifling things to which we are attached, some formalities, certain other things. Oh, it was our birthday, there was no one to celebrate. Nobody said it's happy birthday to you. So, 
no one gave us any gift you know that kind of thing so again i am just giving one or two examples if you just each one of us thinks about our own lifestyle how we do things then you will find for a long time we have not gone out for picnics why not go today and have that what you call gol gappa which we had the other day some kind of a special dish or some nice tea some something relishable the idea is that we do this kind of thing it's not bad i'm not saying that we shouldn't do this but to be after these ideas more and more then to become more mature and to things the whole world is suffering people don't have peace the message has yet to go to everyone how little is the time left how deep should be our meditation there are so many short coming in us there are still many efforts to be done okay even if we go out for picnic baba used to take us out for picnics on hill tops but there he would ask us children now let us have meditation and everything will be related to knowledge okay give drishti to whatever you eat remember baba whatever you are eating so while there will be picnic while there will be a morning walk while there will be some exercise the idea would be to have a some kind of a different engagement but still having our efforts on not stopping them but in a different situation in a different way in a variant way just for a change the idea would not be just to forget about all our four subjects and just to be going for certain grass things that kind of so this is what we have to keep in mind not having that kind of attachment to peripheries to fashions to panicity to trifles to all these small things some attach to their pets pets dogs cats parrots so on so forth i can't give this up this little puppy was born in this home so it's a member of the family so when i have to go to india i can i have to purchase a ticket for it and take it along with me you see and when we sleep in the night there is another person in the bed and that is my pet you know so attachment as i was saying earlier with the persons and personalities now in this case the person has changed the personality has changed and now it is known as pet but here it is whom we still have an attachment with this is another attachment then poverty and penances some people have attachment even with poverty in some religions also it has been praised poverty and we do not think of poverty in the traditional sense but to keep things dirty the place where we live is dirty and we don't have proper things to live our life at least having the minimum conveniences minimum comforts just to have that kind of a penance full attitude austerities as they call it baba says this is hat yoga not raj yoga in raj yoga while you are not to be very spending very much unnecessary unnecessarily but not the other way around also not that you should be attached to the previous way of living as you have been going to the hat yoga ashrams or hat yoga places just trying to put your body in a difficult situation not to have proper place to sleep proper place to live proper kitchen proper other things so on and so forth because we have to become like lakshmi and narayan at least there is a minimum way minimum things which we do require so not to spend extra not to spend unnecessarily we should be doing this we should economize spend as little as possible but not to put us in such a situation where our body feels uncomfortable and where we do not have the minimum necessities they are also necessary everything should be clean it should be a proper place a human being is living not an animal is tied up in its pen so you the child of god is there who would like to become a divine being in golden age 
at least it should give that kind of appearance that you are here, a yogi. Of course, it should be of the form of a yogi's place, not of a king. King, we will be in golden age. But at least it should have the minimum requirements provided. So some people you would find not having even, having only one cup for preparing tea for our own self. So if a guest comes, so they will give him a cup, I mean that cup in which they are taking the tea. So he will say, why don't you take, you first take it, then I will take it, you see. So that kind of thing, these kinds of habits, austerities, not proper required things. This again is some kind of attachment to poverty, attachment of previous ways of living. And then finally, attachment to our past memories. Oh, how good were those days, as people say. Sometimes again and again, past memories come to our mind. So attached we are, we remember them and we enjoy them. And Baba says, now take a new life. You are a newborn baby. Forget about the past. As much as you forget about the past, when you remember them, it may be for different reasons, for the sake of service maybe, or for just explaining some kind of an event. But not that you should relish those past memories. Not that you should live those past memories. Not that you should experience the pleasure and the trauma which you had of the time which you are remembering at the moment. So these remembrances, these reminiscences, bringing their emotional experience along with them, if we are attached to them, is another kind of maya which may draw us again towards the world and force us to give up jnana. So forget about it. Otherwise you won't be able to forget your past friends, past enemies, not them. Because those remembrances will come to your mind again and again. So this you must give up. And then the other thing is attachment to our present relatives. Now it may not be because of their physical charms. It may not be because of their personalities but because of their relationship. Like a son attached to the mother, the mother attached to the son, not because of the good looks, not because of certain good personal traits, but maybe because the relationship has been such. The wife and the husband, the Lokic brothers, the Lokic brother and sister, the attachment due to relations based on some kind of physical relationship. So physical relationship is another to which there should be no attachment. Now these are some kinds of attachments which we are supposed to give up. Then the topic actually was the detached form of action and the spiritual switches. Spiritual switches like we switch on and the, there is light and we switch off there is darkness. There is no more light. So these are the various kinds of attachment which we are supposed to give up by remembering that I am a soul, by remembering that I am to go back home, by remembering that others are my brothers and sisters because they are also souls, by looking at their spiritual beauty, of the qualities, of their moral qualities, rather than other things. So this in brief is our effort, our spiritual effort. This is what we mean by becoming Nashto Moha. Now about the spiritual switches, which we have to turn on. In order that our efforts may be successful and we may get rid of this kind of attachment, all these kinds of attachments. So the first kind of spiritual switch is awareness. Baba has given us knowledge. That knowledge is there in our mind. We understand it now. But that should take the form of awareness. I know I am a soul, so I have got the knowledge of my identity. But to aware of being the soul is called soul consciousness. Mere knowledge of the soul is not enough, but awareness of the soul or consciousness of the soul is essential. Not that I know that God is a point of light. This only is not enough. This is knowledge. But awareness that God is a point of light. So the first switch is 
of the awareness, knowledge turned into awareness that I am a soul, I am a child of God, God is a point of light, I came from Paramdham. All these points of knowledge should be in the form of awareness. Now is the Sangam, Sangam Yuga. After that will be coming the golden age. This kind of awareness. This is the first switch which has to be on. Then the second is attention. Attention or concentration. Heightened attention. Focus, full focus. This is meditation. This is powerful soul consciousness. This is applied knowledge that you are using knowledge. This is yoga ka prayog that you are using knowledge, making experiments with yoga. Attention. My attention should be on a point of light in Paramdham. While I am here, sitting here, talking to somebody, I have an attention. If not full attention, at least dilute attention, that I am a point of light, speaking to another point of light, who is related to me as my brother, and we both are children of God, who is another point of light. This kind of attention. This should not be missed. This is another switch, spiritual switch. If we don't switch it on, there will be darkness. That knowledge is no use. There may be electricity, but if the switch is not on, we are not making use of electricity. There is no light. Similarly, you have the knowledge in your mind, but you are not switching it on, there will be no light. So this second switch is attention. The third switch is love. I am a soul. I am a point of light. This was the awareness. God is a point of light in Paramdham, awareness. Then withdrawing our attention from other things, directing our attention on God, this is attention, concentration, focus. Then do it with love. Open your heart. Switch on your love. If you are concentrating on God as a point of light in Paramdham without love, you can't have good meditation. So this is another switch. Which if it remains shut off, if this switch is not on, then your meditation is not perfect, not bringing you good results, not giving you good experience. So switch on this love. Then another switch is good wishes. If you don't have good wishes towards all, think of all. Let the vibrations of yoga go towards all. Let the whole world benefit from these vibrations of yoga. Shiv Baba is raining light and might on me. I am getting light and might, strong currents of light and might from him. Let these might and light go to all. Let all be benefited by this. Without any reservation, without a single exception, no one is my enemy. I am not angry with anyone. I am not displeased with anyone. I love all. And I therefore want that this what I am getting from Shiv Baba, let all be benefited by it. Even the Prakriti, the matter, let this act on the matter also. Let a golden age come. Every living being be peaceful. Let these vibrations spread in all directions. So you will feel more powerful meditation if you are sitting in meditation and you feel that light and might is coming. And strong currents of light and might are going in all directions because you wish it to happen. You have opened your mind for all. It makes you broad-minded, not just for me. Then you will feel some kind of a flood coming on you, light and might. Because Shiv Baba is more gracious to you, because you are generous, you are donors, you want to give it to everyone. So Shiv Baba is willing to give you that much so that he has been saying, why don't you become donors? And now that you want to become donors with an open heart, he says, okay. So he, with that kind of amount, that energy, light and might, he showers on you. So you will feel that you are today in a very different stage, very, very powerful stage, because you switched on. Let all, everyone, in all directions, all over the world. Why? Because all are my sisters and brothers, all are the children of God. They don't know how to link themselves to God. They can't have this. So I am having this for them. Let them benefit. Like one member of the family earns something and the family shares. 
it is for all not for me so also it is a family and if i get it from shiv baba because i know that art then let me share it with all that kind of thing another switch then another switch is enthusiasm with earnestness with zest whatever you want to do do it with full enthusiasm not as half dead and half alive half awake and half asleep half alert and half under the influence of some anesthesia not like that kind of thing with full alertness red alert as they call it red alert like when our country is in the danger of being attacked by some other country so the defense is red alert the forces the military the navy the air force is asked to be alert because there may be attack any moment so i am not saying that we are under some attack perhaps no but that kind of full alertness if there is a little laziness if there is some kind of passivity in our mind some kind of alertness is still lacking the switch is not yet full on because the enthusiasm is not there so the stage of yoga will be that much less it would be proportionate to your enthusiasm oh i am here to meditate to be a yogi today i will get full light and might in full bloom i will shine so that kind of awakening alertness enthusiasm which should open myself expose myself to that current i am here like i jump into it then i get it full blast so that all the crust which is settled on the soul is broken shattered into pieces it comes like laser rays it penetrates into the soul driving out all the ablutions all the negativities into it so it depends upon what kind of enthusiasm is there not some kind of a pessimism or some kind of a doubt in my mind some kind of a attitude of lethargy totally alert with full energy heart and soul as they call it putting all my very best into this effort with full attention as you say you jump yourself into the effort leaving nothing reserved that kind of you plunge into it that kind of effort so if that enthusiasm is there if we open all these switches then you will feel that that attachment is totally destroyed you are in a different state of being you are in total bliss you are absorbing light and might you are light and might and at that time the attachment is totally finished and once we get that kind of experience again and again we are drawn to that kind of experience we get up new refreshed energetic from this experience this increases our enthusiasm makes us more mature gives us more health spiritual health strengthens our morality we become more strong in knowledge in yoga in other subjects and then the attachment no longer stays because we have experienced the stage without attachment totally detached from all other things opening all the spiritual switches we had that full blast experience and that is what enables us to have full withdrawal from the body from the world from the persons the personalities the possessions the peculiarities and all other things as i said then i am what i am in my original nature now i know who i am i theoretically know i am a point of light but in that experiential stage i know who i am what i am now is the stage of realization experience no doubt remains because the things are being realized first hand not as told by somebody else second hand not third hand somebody having told another person another person telling me but i myself being completely into it 
when i get that kind of experience then it is that i get totally detached what is detachment then only i know the definition in real terms in experiential terms and it is a two way process the more i give up the kinds of attachment which i gave the list to you if i give up those kinds of attachments i have this full blast yoga and when i have this full blast yoga i am able to give up all those kind of attachments these two processes interact with each other they are interdependent if you try to get away from these kinds of attachment by understanding you are preparing yourself for that kind of a yogic experience and if you get a small degree of that yogic experience you get rid of these attachments so both feed each other and the result of this chain reaction is ultimately we become strong yogis whatever comes in our life any problem any difficulty any situation which is very difficult we come out with it successfully having given all our things to baba baba now it is in your hands we are very very safe no one can harm our interest we will never be disturbed never will any tear come from our eyes because you have adopted us we are in your lap baba we are totally in your hands the safest that is possible and you have promised us we totally believe in your promise what we want is give us this kind of experience what we want is give us this kind of a stage what we want is give us your full inheritance be with us and let us be with you this is what we want nothing apart from this thank you Om Shanti